Hi there, it is Saturday morning, which means it is time for Meals with Melissa, where we take some of the recipes that you might love and make them a healthier version um, and hopefully less complicated. So today we have a really great option. Um, I don't know about you, but I love banana bread. Actually, I like all kinds of bread. I like zucchini bread, I love pumpkin bread. I have such a great fall recipe for that. But you know, I'm always trying to make something a little bit healthier so that we're not eating as much sugar in my household. And this is a really good one, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie, the best part is it's only four ingredients. So it's gluten-free. Um, for those of you who may not know, I don't really know if I've talked about it before, I actually have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which means that my uh, body has been attacking my thyroid. So I really stay away from gluten and from dairy and for, from some other things that may cause inflammation in my body. So of course, I look for gluten-free options all the time. Um, and fortunately, this day and age, there's a lot that is gluten-free now. Just because it says gluten-free does not mean it is healthy. So keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that you know you, you gotta use some common sense there that you know, gluten-free or organic, if it's still processed, it's still processed. Um, and it's not always your best option. But um, this is a great one. Now, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it is, first of all, it tastes amazing. Um, but it is very um, filling, very energy dense, and it doesn't take much. So make sure that if you make this and you take it to work as a snack or use it for breakfast, um, it's got peanut butter in it, so it's going to be energy dense. So you can't eat a lot of it um, and think that, you know, oh, it's healthy, so I can eat a, a ton of it. So it's gonna be super, super simple. Um, first of all, I'm going to use my Big Ninja. You know, I used to have a blender and I always got frustrated because it really just didn't mix things well enough. Um, I guess if I got a Vitamix, maybe it would, but you know, that's a little pricey. So I got the next best thing. I just got a giant uh, Ninja. It works great. So I, this actually makes a fairly good sized loaf. So um, I'm gonna take four to five medium bananas, about a pound and a half of ripe bananas. If they're a little overripe, that's even better because then they actually mix better um, and you get that great banana flavor. So the great thing about bananas, of course, any fruit, if you're gonna eat simple sugars, you should be getting them from fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, the whole fruit is actually better than the juice because the juice actually breaks down. You're, you're kind of concentrating the sugars without the, the pulp and the fiber to actually slow it down from hitting your bloodstream as sugar. So, you know, fruit is great. You just wanna eat in a way that really works for you. So I'm gonna do about, I think I've got one, two, three, four, five bananas here. I'm just throwing them in my big container, okay? Um, really super easy. I kinda peeled them, but maybe I wanted you to see me finish. Um, so I'm going to throw those in my Ninja. I'm also going to take, and by the way, I have preheated my oven to 350, it's ready to go. It doesn't take very long to mix it up, so um, throw those in there. I'm going to take one cup of peanut butter. Now you can use almond butter. I don't care if it's um, creamy or, or crunchy, whatever the texture you like, but I do tend to use um, a peanut butter that has much lower in sugar. Um, at my household, we tend to use Adam's all natural peanut butter. Um, I also love to grind my own um, either at, well, at Winco. Winco, which is a local uh, grocery store in my area, um, actually allows you to grind your own so you know that it, there's no added sugars. Yes, I know, sugar makes it taste better, but of course we're trying to avoid added sugar um, in our diet because that, you know, is a problem in America. All right, so I'm going to throw this in with that, and then to that I'm going to add two cups of old-fashioned rolled oats. Um, you know, oats are actually a great source of carbohydrates. Um, they're vitamin-filled, they're nutrient-dense. Um, you don't wanna do any sort of instant because they've taken the fiber husk off the product, which actually makes it turn to sugar faster in your system. Um, and I love peanut butter, so mm, that's a great option for this one. So I'm gonna throw in my two cups. I've already pre-measured, it just takes less time. Throw in my two cups of my rolled oats. There we go. Now, once I mix this together, it's actually gonna be really, really thick. So keep that in mind that you know, you're gonna have to really use probably a rubber spatula in order to get it off the blades, um, but it's not that difficult, right? Okay, so let me throw this on. <laughs> it's just so big, it's just such a big, a big contraption here. All right, I'm gonna throw this on. Oops, there we go, with the lid. I normally use such a small Ninja um, because we just make like small smoothies and drinks in it, so it's really funny to get this out and utilize it. All right, so it's gonna take me a second. Um, it's gonna be super loud for a sec, but yeah, let's make sure that it is uh, plugged in would be super helpful as well. All right, we got it plugged in. Okay, so turn it on. There we go, give, give me a second here. I've also got my rubber strap spatula just in case I need to scrape down the sides. And it'll take a second to incorporate, so just give it a sec. It's a going. Almost 
there. All right. Well, you want it to really be incorporated well and you want it to cause more of a smaller particle of the oak. So that's why we're doing this a really good job mixing it together. Alright. Alright, that looks pretty good. Alright, so I'm going to take the cloth. There's a little bit that hasn't mixed together, but it, honestly it's not going to make that big of a difference. I'm just gonna scrape down the sides a little bit and pull out the, the blades in there. So like I said, it's gonna make it a little bit thick, so keep that in mind, um, that you're gonna have to work with it a little bit, but not too bad at all. Perfect. Looks really good. Okay, so to that, I'm gonna add one cup of chocolate chips. Now, it is your choice <laughs> as to what type of chocolate chips that you're going to use. Um, in my household, we tend to use a lot of the Lily's chocolate chips. Uh, they're found at, you can find them at health food stores in a lot of areas. You can order them on Amazon. Um, our local grocery store, I think that Fred Meyer in the gourmet section um, carries it, the organic section, but I also find them locally here at a, a grocery store called Yolks. Um, but they were on sale this week, so they were really hard to find. But I usually keep some on hand, so we're good. All right, so I'm gonna put this in a bowl. You don't wanna throw the chocolate chips in with everything else and blend it because then they'll become really small pieces and you actually want those, those chunks in there. All right, not too difficult. Just getting it out. Might get a little messy, that's okay. But I got my, my gorgeous apron. Still love this apron, this was my son's idea. It's got my Meals with Melissa logo on it. All right. So I'm gonna put that in there and then I'm gonna fold in with a little bit bigger spatula or you know, a wooden spoon, um, the one cup of chocolate chips. Like I said, if you, do, if you choose to do semi-sweet, semi um, just know that you're adding some, some sugar. The bananas do contain some natural sugar, obviously, uh, but that's actually the best way to sweeten any sort of food is with natural sugars versus added sugars. Okay, I think I got most of it. Like I said, it's a little messy, but that's okay. All right, so to that, I'm going to add one cup of the chocolate chips and just fold it in. I need something a little bit bigger to mix it with. So I'm gonna grab just a different, a little bit bigger spatula. I'm making a mess there. All right, that'll work. Good thing I'm set up for this. Okay, perfect. Actually, this mix much, much better than the first batch I made. Um, you know, I test all these on my family to make sure that they taste good, that they're a good texture. Um, that, you know, my 10 year old, 11 year old son will eat it uh, just to make sure that it's, it's a good recipe for you. Now, um, I have, every once in a while I find a recipe that I just don't love for whatever reason. Um, I've actually tested a couple things like um, a sugar-free Nutella that just did not turn out whatsoever. So <laughs> I do test these out for you usually midweek. Um, my family loves it because it gives them something else to, something to try and something new. All right, so I'm going to take uh, my loaf pan Okay, and I believe this is like a nine by four, whatever, um, size, just for a decent loaf size. I'm going to spray the sides, and then I'm actually gonna add a piece of parchment paper down at the bottom. Parchment is my favorite tool. It helps so things don't stick. And yeah, I use it all the time. It's a great tool. Now, in order for it to fit perfectly at the bottom, all I've done is I've taken my piece of parchment, I put the pan down on the parchment, and I trace around the bottom with a marker just so that I can get the approximate size of the bottom. And then when I cut it out, I cut the inside of the line. So you can see here, well you probably can't see from that far away, but I'm gonna cut just inside the line that I drew, which will make sure that it actually fits at the bottom of my pan. I like parchment because it helps it, it's, it just, so it doesn't stick. I hate it when things stick. I don't do complicated and I don't like to you know, have to problem shoot, you know, how come my cake didn't turn out right? How come it all stuck to the bottom? So you've learned over the years to, to and sometimes I learned some great front things from you guys too. So keep that in mind. I've got some great tips. Okay, so I'm gonna throw that in the bottom of my pan and it fits just perfectly. Look at that, look at that, all pretty. Woo. All right, and I put my loaf in there. At first I thought it was gonna make a smaller loaf the first time I made it, and it wasn't. It was like, that is not going to fit. So I'm putting this in, I want to lick my fingers right now. <laughs> I'm not going to. All right, so I'm going to stick this in. I preheated the oven to 350, 
and I'm gonna cook it for about 30-ish minutes. I would start checking it at about 25. Now, it's not gonna raise like regular bread. Uh, because of the ingredients and we're not adding anything that has a leavening agent, it's not going to rise. So it's gonna look kind of like an interesting, I'm gonna show you what it's gonna look like here in just a second. I do have the rest of the loaf that I made the other night. It turned out bomb, not gonna lie. Now, if you're somebody who is really addicted to sugar, Mm, might be a problem you're probably it, it does taste sweet I mean it does between the banana um, and of course the Lily's chocolate chips are made with stevia not sucralose and not sugar um, and nothing like it so um, not a bad option right um, stevia is the one sugar substitute that does not spike insulin okay so there we go all right washing my hands do not perfect right off to the side of it that's the side of your you all right, I'm gonna throw this in the oven. I'm gonna set the timer and let me show you exactly what it's gonna look like in just a second here. Throwing it in. All right. And it's also one of them that you can poke it with a toothpick when you're done, but that's not really gonna be a telltale sign because the ingredients are so different than a normal bread, right? Um, so it's definitely dense, it's definitely thick. It doesn't take much. Uh, like I said, you can put it in the fridge, you can wrap it tight, throw it in the freezer, bring it out when you need it. I, I know a lot of people struggle with really simple, easy, good tasting snacks, and this might be a great one. Like I said, you could also throw it in for breakfast um, along with maybe a protein, and it would be just a really great option and give you a great start to the day. So you can see that it's a little thick, but oh my gosh, so good. Like I just break off little, like, little teeny pieces, um, and it's amazing there. So I see that people are popping up there. Oh, Maria says that she's excited for the recipe. Um, yeah, I know, girl, I love sugar too. So that's my biggest issue is if I, I know that if I start eating sugar, I really struggle to stop. And type two diabetes does run in my family. Um, so it's something that I've really had to be um, on top of and make sure that I'm not allowing it to control uh, my food intake because that's, yeah, that's a struggle. So anyway, hopefully that works for you. I will post the recipe down below, it's super, super simple. Um, and I like to give credit where credit's due, so I will post where I found it. Uh, Pinterest can be your friend, it's a really great tool. Um, have an incredible, incredible weekend. Happy Easter, everybody. I hope you get time to enjoy your family. Um, hopefully the weather gets a little bit better outside uh, so we can enjoy it. Have a great weekend, and until next week, that's Meals with Melissa. Bye-bye now.